Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's make a start. So I have a basic scene set up with my object with three lights focused on it, a camera, a plane, and then some backlighting. A nice simple setup to give a very simple look. Now if I switch over to the shading tab, you can see that I've already applied a principled BSDF shader to the box, just with the standard settings. So let's press Shift A to search for a wave texture. And let's plug that into the base color. Now it's not projecting as expected. So we need to press Control T to add a texture and texture coordinate and mapping node and use the UV output from the texture coordinate. If yours doesn't project up the side like this straight away, Go into edit mode by pressing tab, press U, and choose project from view. Let's increase the wave texture scale to 20. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. Now I don't actually want it to apply to the color, I want it to apply to the height or the normal. So I'm going to move those all down here. And it's already messed it up because I need something else in here to convert this data into normal data. So we'll get ourselves a bump node. Make sure that's being plugged into the height. And that's better. We're going to set the strength to 0.25 and the distance to 0.1. By selecting nodes and pressing shift equals, then it does automatically align your nodes. And that's if you've got the node wrangler add-on enabled. So do make sure to check that out. Let's get some more texture and some color going on as well. So we'll search for a noise texture. That needs the vector input as well from the mapping node. And we're going to take the factor over into the base color. So that's giving us kind of a, a mottled effect. I'm going to increase the scale to 50, the detail to 15, and the roughness to 0.75. And let's put one in distortion as well. So that gives us a nice sort of, let's say cardboard mottled effect. Now we need to add some color. So I'm going to search for and add a color ramp. And we need to find ourselves some cardboardy colors. So I cheated a little bit and I went ahead and found some hex colors that I liked that really worked. So in the black, I'm going to have 48382A. Oops. 48382A and that gives me my dark color. And then in the light color, I'll just copy and paste it. I'm going to use D3A883 and that gives me this sort of light cardboard color. I'm going to change the color interpolation mode to B spline to make it a little softer as well. Looking good. Now on the principled shader itself I'm going to increase the roughness to 0.75. And what I would like to do is mingle this texture with the wave texture as well. So these stripes aren't as pronounced. 
So what I will do is press Control and Shift on my keyboard, then right click on the wave texture and drag up onto the noise texture. That gives me a mix node, but it hasn't quite connected it to where I wanted uh, it to go. So we'll take that out of there and plug that into the height of the uh, bump node. And then we'll reconnect the noise texture to our color ramp. So we now have these two textures being mixed together into the mix shader. So we get this nice sort of um, texturing going through those stripes. That goes into the bump node and that goes into the principal shader. Now the mix factor, I'll drop a down quite a bit to 0.1. And you can see what difference that makes. But from a distance, you can still just make out that striping or banding. Let's just move those up a bit. Uh, yep. So that's mostly the actual general cardboard, but it's kind of projecting it all round. And with cardboard, or corrugated cardboard at least, you'd have something going on on the edges themselves. So what we're going to do is go over to the material tab on the right, create a bland, brand new slot and a brand new material. And let's just change the name to edge. Come over here, press A and period key on the number pad to bring the material into focus. And then on the principled shader, again, increase the roughness to 0.75 and decrease the specular to zero. Now this material isn't currently assigned anywhere. Um, so I'm creating depth here using a solidify modifier. So come down to where it says materials and where it says rim, increase that to one. And basically what that's going to do is offset the material application. So our main material is this one at the top, but when it's looking for what to put on the rim, it's going to go down one, down this stack. So it'll come to the edge and you can see it's done it. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is add a magic texture. Plug that into the base color. Increase the scale to 25. Add a texture coordinate and a mapping node and we're using the generated for this. And then I need to apply the same colors that I've used uh, previously. So it's probably just easier if I go over here, select the color ramp that I use, copy, go back to the other material, and then uh, control V for paste. Now it might have disappeared somewhere off the face of the earth over here, in fact it put it. So just make sure you zoom out if it doesn't automatically appear where you are working. And then we're gonna plug that between the magic texture and the principled shader. And what I'm gonna do is drop the value down on both of these so that it darkens them off a bit and gives us a more realistic edge. Okay, I think that's about done. So we'll very quickly send that to render. I'm using, what am I using on this one? 1024, I could get away with a whole bunch less. You could use denoising. I'm using the default lighting setup and I don't think I've made any other changes. Oh, actually, while I'm here, in your uh, render properties, one trick for getting a, a slightly more vibrant um, look is to go to color ma management and where you've got look, it will probably be set to none uh, first thing when you load Blender. As you can see, it's quite a pale cardboard, but you can change the contrast level to just boost the color ranges within your design. So that's just a tip. 
Anyway, let's take a look. And there you have it, a nice cardboard texture. I'm not sure what's going on here. I must have done something wrong with my modeling, but the texture itself works perfect. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. I keep doing these materials. People seem to like them. If there's anything or any materials you'd like to see covered, please do check back through the playlist to see if it's already been done. And if not, please do feel free to ask. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching.